Thank you for joining us today. This video is a quick step-by-step -step guide to logging into your virtual data center environment for the first time. There are two parts to this series. This video is part one, initial setup. Let's get started. So welcome and thanks for choosing New Cloud Networks to be your virtual data center provider. But now what? The resources have been provisioned and the basic infrastructure is in place, but we still have some work to do. Part one of this series will go through initial setup, including getting to know your portal, building the external and internal networks, and protecting your environment. Part two will go through building and managing how to build vApps and VMs and where to find your management tools. So let's get started with part one. Getting to know your portal. First step is to log into your new portal. New Cloud Networks should have provided you with documentation on what the URL, username, and initial password is that you will be using to log in. If you have not received your welcome documentation or login information, please contact us at support at newcloudnetworks.com and we'll get it sorted out for you. New Cloud Networks recommends using Mozilla Firefox to take advantage of all the features available in your virtual data center portal. When you log in for the first time, the main area of the home page will be completely empty since you have not built or configured any vApps or VMs. There are four main tabs in the top left of the page. These will serve as your main navigation menu. There is, of course, the Home tab, the My Cloud tab, the Catalogs tab, and the Administration tab. Let's look at all of them in a little bit more detail. The home page offers a view of all of your vApps and VMs as well as the general tabs that we just went through. You'll be able to access all vApps and VMs, these general tabs, a right-hand menu of important links, and of course preferences, which allows you to quickly change your password. Since we provided the login information, New Cloud highly recommends changing your password the first time you log in to ensure your data security. As we navigate to the My Cloud tab, you'll notice that we can see vApps and VMs in the VDC. This view is a little different than that of the home page as it is much more detailed. Logs of actions performed in the VDC. Logs keep track of everything that happens in the virtual data center. So every change that has been made will be referenced back to here. You'll be able to see who made those changes and what part of the environment was changed. It isn't just restricted to actions performed in this specific tab for vApps and VMs, but also includes network and administration changes as well. You can add a new vApp from scratch or a vApp from catalog, which we'll discuss further in part two and of course, start, suspend, and stop a vApp or VM in the My Cloud tab. The settings icon allows you to carry out specific actions related to each vApp. We'll discuss this in further detail in part two of this series. In the Catalogs tab, you'll see all catalogs created by your organization and have the ability to add new catalogs and edit existing catalog templates. You'll also be able to see any public catalogs created by New Cloud Networks to provide media and vApp templates to our clients. Lastly, if you right-click on a specific catalog, you can change settings for the catalog, such as who gets to use the catalog and to whom it actually belongs to. The last tab in our top left-hand corner is, of course, the Administration tab. This page will definitely be one of the most important pages for your organization. Here, you can manage and monitor your data center resources and configure network settings, add and manage users, and access general settings of the portal. Let's talk about provisioning an additional user. This will be a good first step to keep track of changes made by multiple users in your virtual data center environment. To add a user, navigate to the Administration tab, then select Users. By selecting the Add Users icon, we'll be able to pull up this screen. Go ahead and enter the credentials you'd like your user to have. Make sure to enable their account. Select the user's role. All of your choices are actually shown here. We have Organization Administrator, Catalog Author, VApp Author, VApp User, Console Access Only, and Read Only. 
For a full description of each user's roles and rights and abilities, please visit your virtual data center guide provided by New Cloud Networks. Enter the user's contact information and any quotas that they will need to meet. Then select OK. Your portal will automatically provision the new user. Now, login information will not automatically be sent to them, so you'll want to send them their credentials manually, either by right-clicking on their name and selecting Notify to send them an email, or sending them an email through your personal email. A quick overview of the total resources allocated and being consumed in your data center can be found through the Administration tab. Select Virtual Data Centers, then the Monitor tab. On this screen, you will be able to see allocated and consumed processor, memory, and storage space. In this example, none of our resources are being consumed because this is a brand new demo data center. A deeper dive into this section of the administration page will give us access into our specific data center. Our current demo data center that we are in is named DEN-TEST51-VDC. In this data center screen, we see several management tabs. 1. vApps, 2. vApp templates, 3. media, 4. storage profiles, 5. edge gateways, and 6. org VDC networks. We'll go into more detail about these tabs as we go through part 1 and 2. Now that we have a general idea of where to find everything in the portal, let's make sure we have a network for data to communicate on. 2. Build your network. Before we begin, there are a couple things you'll need. Your public IP address, subnet, suballocated IP pools, gateway, network mask, static IP pool range, primary and secondary DNS. New Cloud Networks initially provides up to five usable IP addresses, but more are available upon request. Since New Cloud is providing these addresses, you will be able to find them here in your portal, which we will cover shortly. For demo purposes, though, we've chosen to use the following. Public IP address, subnet, suballocated IP pools, gateway, network mask, static IP pool range, primary DNS, and secondary DNS. If your new cloud virtual data center is primarily located in the Denver, Colorado data center, the primary and secondary DNS provided here for the demo will be used in your environment as well. Keep in mind that if you choose to use your own DNS server or your VDC is primarily out of a different data center, your DNS IP addresses will be different. If we navigate to the Edge Gateways tab, you'll notice that an Edge Gateway has already been provisioned. By right-clicking on the gateway and selecting Properties, you'll be able to 1. find how many IP addresses are provided by New Cloud, and 2. what the primary public IP address is. By scrolling through the other tabs, such as suballocated IP pools, we'll be able to find a lot more information about the already configured network infrastructure. Now that we have some basic information about our network, let's build an org VDC network to allow our virtual machines to access the internet. First, navigate to the Administration tab, then into your virtual data center. As stated before, our data center is den-test51-vdc for demo purposes. Navigate to org VDC network tab and select the add icon the new organization VDC network screen should come up. Select network type. In this first step, you can choose to build an internal or an external network connection. You'll want to create both if you want your servers to be able to communicate internally with each other and to be able to communicate with the outside world or out to the internet. Since we are trying to build an external network connection, we'll go ahead and choose Create a Routed Network by connecting to an existing Edge Gateway. Select your Edge Gateway, in this case ours is named Test51, and select Next. On the Configured Network tab, enter your gateway address, network mask, and primary and secondary DNS. Once finished, enter the static IP pool you'd like to pull addresses from. Then select Next. You'll name and describe this network, then select Next, view the quick summary, and select Finish. Your portal will start provisioning the network immediately. 
Once both an internal and external org VDC network is set up, we'll want to configure NAT or network address translations. Both SourceNet and DestinationNet can be configured by going to Administration tab, the specific data center, in our case DEN-TEST51-VDC, select the Edge Gateways tab, right-click on the gateway, and in this drop-down find Edge Gateway Services. Lastly, select the NAT tab and we're ready to start adding NAT rules. Now, in the NAT tab of Configure Services, we'll go ahead and select either the Add SNAT or to add DNAT. If you need a quick reference of the most common ports, please consult your virtual data center guide provided by NewCloud. Now that we have successfully configured our internal network, external network, and NAT policies, let's move on to securing the data. First, we'll need to navigate to the firewall screen, so from the Edge Gateways tab under the Data Center, right-click on the pre-configured gateway and select Edge Gateway Services. Then select the Firewall tab. Since this is the first time we have accessed this page, we'll need to check the Enable Firewall checkbox and choose our default action, which NewCloud recommends to be Deny. Then select Add to add a new firewall rule. Generally speaking, there are four basic rules we need to cover. One, an outgoing rule allowing internet access. Two, a rule allowing an external service to be accessible. Three, an internal to internal rule allowing for SMTP traffic. And four, a deny rule preventing two internal networks from communicating. Remember that firewall rules are addressed in descending order. So, top to bottom, meaning the order of the rule will make a difference. For example, if you want to deny two internal networks from communicating, but your first firewall rule is allowing internal to any communication, then your firewall will not deny the two networks from communicating with each other, because the first rule takes precedence. Keep this in mind as you set up your firewall rules. Back in our tab, we will select Add to add a new firewall rule. Make sure to check the Enabled checkbox if you want your rule to be effective immediately. Fill in the name, source, source port, destination, destination port, protocol, and action. Then select whether or not you would like to log the network traffic for this specific firewall rule and select OK. Notice the rule ID on the left hand side. They are marked in the descending order your firewall will follow. New Cloud Networks recommends that these four rules be met. 1. Rules specifying exact internal-to-internal -internal communication. 2. Rules denying internal-to-internal -internal communication. 3. Rules allowing internal-to-external -external communication. and 4. Rules allowing external-to-internal -internal communication. Any other rules that are necessary to keeping your data protected are at your discretion. The last part of this tutorial is about building a VPN. To build a VPN, access the Edge Gateway Services screen and navigate to the VPN tab. Select Enable VPN, then select Configure Public IPs. Make sure that your desired public IP address is entered here and select OK. To add a new VPN tunnel, select Add. Once you select Add, the following screen will appear. Please make sure you are filling in everything. 1. Name and describe your VPN. 2. Define what you are establishing a VPN to. 3. Select the local networks that will communicate across the tunnel. 4. Select the peer network. 5. Select the local endpoint. 6. Select the local ID. 7. Select the peer ID. 8. Enter the peer address, and 9. Set a pre-shared key. The last step is to set a rule on the other firewall to allow traffic to flow both ways. Below is a list of the configurations you'll need for the other firewall. This concludes part 1 of our two-part virtual data center guide. So what have we done in this tutorial? We've gotten to know the general workings of the portal. We've made sure that our environment has multiple networks for internal and external traffic. We've configured NAT rules, 
configured and added firewall rules, and built a VPN tunnel between the virtual data center and another network. Thanks so much for joining us today, and please join us for part two to get to know the portal more intimately and how to build and manage vApps and VMs and catalogs. If you have any questions, please email us at support at newcloudnetworks.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in part two.